You are listening to King Jesus Radio, the official podcast of New Living Way Church. I resisted the chocolate donuts because we talked about chocolate donuts last week, and I resisted them when I went to the market after church that day. So you just don't. You know, some people just don't eat sweets. They just don't. Yeah. Some eat them every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like sweets. Some of us have to be afraid to not have the desire to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I have like four different El Salvadorian friends. They don't like chocolate. Oh, okay. Yeah, some people that don't like chocolate, or yeah, definitely. So that just means more for us, right? <laughs> Well, praise God. Welcome, everybody, to the Bible study tonight, and those joining us with us online as well. So praise God. It's good to be here tonight. Glad we're able to be together tonight. Amen? Mm -hmm. Well, tonight's uh, scripture will be in the book of Acts, chapter 16, and we'll be going through verse 6 through 10 tonight. So you guys can get your Bibles ready, and, and uh, for those watching with us as well, Acts 16, verse 6 through 10. And the title of tonight's uh, um, teaching is Forbidden by, and it's taken from the scripture, so that's why it's, the title's in there. You'll see, you'll see it as we read as I'm... Uh, in the English Standard Version, so um, as we prepare the messages and the teachings, usually all from that version. So those are a lot of the titles will come from from that scripture. Amen. So just looking forward to to being here today. Sister Lila, would you mind opening us up in a word of prayer today? Absolutely. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you for this day that you've given us. Brother. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word that will come out and freshly, Father, Lord. Let it be planted on good ground, Lord. Let yes, it Lord Jesus. Precious, yes, Father, Lord, Lord Jesus. Yes. Let it fill in any gap, Lord. Let it heal anything that needs to be healed, Lord. Yes. Let it minister to each of your sheep, oh, precious Father, Lord, for everything Jesus. that they need to take yes, from the yes, master. So we thank you, Lord. Become eager to hear your Jesus. word and to learn your word, precious Father, Lord. I cover everybody that's on their way, precious Father, Lord. Yes. Bless yes, them, Lord. Lord, Lord your Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lead and guide my pastor, yes, precious Lord, Father. Let it be. Your words that come out of his mouth, yes. Yes. and we thank you for this word, Master. In your son's most precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. Well, the, a couple of just quick announcements. So this uh, this this Friday. Women of God, you guys have a women's ministry uh, this this Friday night, so at 7 p.m. You can clap. That's cool. <laughs> Amen. So uh, it'll be a women's ministry this Friday night at 7 o'clock. So it'll be here in the annex room. Uh, I know that they'll have some coffee, so, you know, that'll be for sure. And, uh, you know, so you guys be able to come and hang out. So we encourage you to come and, and uh, take part. And, you know, you guys be able to enjoy that night together. Amen. So um, I won't be here. So it'll be a women's, women's event, you know, women's ministry. <laughs> so, but let thee will be. And, and uh, I'm just, you know, I'm looking forward to what the Lord does have for you guys. And, and I know it'll be a blessing. So this Friday night, 7 p.m. And uh, just for for um, for going forward, uh, every month going forward for this year, it will be most likely the third Friday of every month. You guys, there will be a women's third ministry Friday. every third Friday of the month, so uh, 7 p.m. meeting here, and, and just really looking forward to what the Lord has in store. Amen. Mm -hmm. So praise God. So that'll be this Friday, and then uh, Sunday we have service at uh, 9:15. You know, Sunday morning prayer and God's word. So we're going through the book of Nehemiah, and uh, it's just been such a blessing to continue to do so. So we're still there. And uh, Sunday morning, 1045 service. So looking forward to coming together and praising the Lord together, worshiping and, you know, seeking the Lord through his word and just excited for what the Lord has for us on Sunday. Amen. So looking forward to that as well. And then uh, next Friday will be the Rich Kids Night, would be the Rooted in Christ for the youth. So that'll be next Friday night. So looking forward to that as well. And uh, just keep it in prayer and all the all the different things that we're doing and the Lord is doing through our lives. Amen. Well, praise God. So uh, does anybody just have a, a testimony, praise report, just want to give shouts to the Lord? Yes, it's a Karen. I got a big one. <clears throat> my sister-in-law, this is my husband's sister, has a grandchild, the age of my grandchild, so they're 12 years old. She was cooking something on the stove and didn't turn off the, the thing completely. And it, it was putting everybody to sleep. The dog was going to sleep. My sister, my sister-in-law, her name is Mary. <clears throat> she said she, she didn't know what was going on. She kept on checking, but she never, was never drawn to the. Oh wow! Thing. She made it to the door to open it up. She said she, she probably would have died had she not opened that door. She barely made it there. Wow! So God's hand was on her, and she's giving God all the praise and glory because oh, she knows how serious it actually was. Wow! Amen. Praise God for that. Wow! Thank you, Jesus, for that. Amen. Yeah. Wow, that's 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 very close right there. Well, that's so, monoxide, right? Yeah, the carbon yeah. monoxide, right? Yeah, wow. Well, that's dangerous. Well, praise God, they're okay, and they came through it. And man, yeah. this in the neck. Wow, praise the Lord for that. Um, anybody else? Anybody else just want to give the Lord a shout or just a share? Yes, yeah, it's the last. I have a testimony. Um, our dog got hurt, right? And so we 
you never have to take your kids out of the doctor. And so I was just happy to see, um, you know, Grace grab the dog and she was crying over her. And, you know, I'm driving and, you know, I'm as composed as I can possibly be. And, you know, it was just so beautiful to see. And so, you know, we get to the doc, you know, to the hospital and, you know, the doctor, you know, hours go by and we see her and they're like, you know, there's nothing wrong. She just kind of slipped her disc on her little knee. And so it slips up. So it looks broken, but it's not. It like will go back. But we didn't know it was going to go back. And so we were just like, oh, my God, what's wrong with the dog, you know? Um, And so she was just so relieved and praying. and so i told her you see the power of prayer like you see and the fact that that was her first reaction to me it was just a blessing no, you see that. like he's just acknowledging in everything like what in the dog but whatever it is doesn't matter like, he's just acknowledging it. so i was like you see he met you where you were i'm like look at she's fine and so that's our testimony amen praise, <laughs> praise god <laughs> amen amen there's a lot for that amen, amen. that is amen. good Hey, you can lay your hands on, on your pets, definitely, you know, pray and, and believe the Lord. And you know what? They're, they're, they're his creation as well. And, you know, he can heal and restore them as well. Amen. So praise God. Awesome testimony. Catherine, who's this? This is Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Hi. Karen. It's Angie and Art. Oh, Hi. yes. I, I think I've, um, it's been a few months since I've been here. So <coughs> Good to have you. Here. <laughs> Glad you're here with us today. This is Alice and Frank over here as well. Amen. Well, yeah. I actually, actually have a testimony. Yeah, um, amen. I'd like to share it. Go. Yeah, definitely. Love to hear it. I um, I was listening to my friends, and um, you know, I I really haven't don't want to miss work because you know, um, I mean, if I have any like COVID symptoms or anything like that, then they won't allow me to for two weeks. Oh, okay. Um, but my friends were hanging out together, and they both had COVID. Um, so. We were in close proximity, and I was just praying to God, and I was praying like Psalm ninety one, and um, and they both came out positive except me. So I was like very grateful to God, you know, for for keeping me away from the illness, so I can um, you know not miss any work or anything like that. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God. That's His hand over you and His covering, right? Amen. amen. And how are your friends doing? Are they okay? Oh, they're good. Yeah. yeah amen. Okay. Yeah, praise God. Amen. Amen. But yeah, definitely that's, that's your livelihood and, and you need to keep it going. So praise God for that. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. We serve a good, mighty, awesome God, right? Amen. amen. We do serve an awesome, mighty God and, and uh, never stop giving the praise to God. Never stop giving those that's testimonies because right. he, he, he deserves all the glory and praise amen. and honor. Amen. So, you know, we're encouraged and, and you know, we all come together encouraged. So I just, again, I go back to Friday morning's uh, prayer in the, in the morning. Just the vision of, of when they place the, the choirs on the two sides of the wall, right? That and awesome. and that's just an awesome, you know, view because it, it's, 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 you know, referring to a place of, it was a panoramic view of being able to look upon Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the wall and the temple. Mm-hmm. And you're, it's, you're not just seeing one picture, but you're seeing the picture of so many people, yes, what they awesome. see. But that makes one whole picture, you know? So that's our testimonies. That's our livelihood. That's who we are today in Christ. It's like, yeah, one part may seem small to us, but all together, it's huge because we get to see how big our God is. You say it's not Los Angeles, Catherine. How do you do pray? You, you said it's not this little thing. It's yeah, it's bigger than ourselves, and yeah. it's a bit, it's bigger than ourselves. So it's just amazing to see like God using you know all of our lives together. That just makes even God even greater, right? And that's just us. I mean, imagine just the whole world. I mean, whole universe out there, and that just displays how great God is. Amen. So. Well, praise God. So grateful to be here today. Again, welcome to Bible study. <laughs> you guys all got your Bibles, right? Got your Bibles? Yeah. Yeah. All right. If not, it's on your phone. If not, we have Bibles here as well. Amen. So we're going to be going to the book of Acts chapter 16, and we're going to be looking at uh, verse 6 to 10 today. So we're continuing in the book of Acts. And uh, if, um, what's it called? We have been going through the, through what the book of Luke and the book of Acts. So all of uh, the book of Acts and everything is on the YouTube and stuff like that on the podcast. So if you like to catch up or anything on Bible studies, you can always go back to those. And then also, I forgot, uh, also for tithes and offerings, we do have the box here, but we are also doing Zell. So if you like to do that, it's at newlivingwaychurchdowney at gmail.com. So if you ever have any questions on that, just feel free to let me know. And, uh, you know, we started doing that this year. So it's been a blessing on that. Amen. Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for your word. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for your presence here today, Lord Jesus, and we just submit ourselves to you, Lord God. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand, Lord, and we just thank you for this time tonight. 
And we thank you, Father God, that we have a place to come to today, Lord Jesus, to study your word, my God. And we just ask you, Lord Jesus, to teach us by your spirit, Lord God. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord, because we believe in you, Lord, and we believe in your word, my God. So we just thank you this night, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So let's go ahead and look at uh, Acts chapter 16, and we're going to read verse 6 through 10 here, and then we'll come back and we'll start to break this down a bit. So Acts 16, verse 6 through 10. So it says here, and when they and they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Amen. So this is our scripture tonight, and this is what we're going to be studying today. <clears throat> and again, the, the topic and focus is forbidden by Okay, so we're not we're not going to be talking about the forbidden fruit tonight, though. We're going to be talking about forbidden by God. Okay, we're going to be looking at something. It's like what we talked about last week, that kind of backwards thinking, like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. It, 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 I don't get this. And that's what we're kind of looking at here. It's like last week we were talking about, we had just studied about, well, circumcision is no longer needed, but yet there was a reason why Timothy was circumcised. And so this is another one of these portions of scriptures right here. It's like, well wait a minute, this doesn't, why, why wouldn't God allow this? What, I, don't, I don't get this. And there are many times in our lives that we will find ourselves in a place that we just don't get it. Like, why am I having to go through this? Why am I not able to do this? You know, um, certain things that not even, not, not bad things. We're talking about things that are good, that we think are good or we see as good. You know, I want to help this person. I want to encourage this person. I want to see this person come to a certain place. And because we care so much, it, many times we can find ourselves in a discouraged place wondering, well, God, I thought I was following you. I thought I'm going according to your will, but yet things that don't seem to be working out the way I thought they would. Or it doesn't seem like I'm, you know, just I'm finding myself in this place where I have so many questions. Am I sure I'm where God wants me? Am I sure? Am I, am I doing what God wants me to do? And I know that through this word today that I know the Lord has some freedom for us today. Because how many of us don't want to be held down by guilt and shame, right? Because sometimes our, we could get a guilty conscience because there's so many things that we know, man, I could be out there doing this. I could be out there doing that, you know, and then many times like I, when I watch like sports documentaries and stuff like that and I see the stuff, the work that they put into that, man, sometimes I feel guilty after watching. I was like, man, I'm probably here sitting watching this and I should be doing something, you know, I should be, you know, I should be putting in some work like that. Right. But then again, that's why they're making the millions of dollars. But, you know, still at the same time, it's like. Sometimes you kind of feel guilty on that, like, man, I, I should be doing more, you know, and then I just change it, you know, but it's, <laughs> it's like sometimes we find ourselves in that place. But and that sometimes can happen with God. And don't get me wrong. There are many times that we're just we are rebellious There's times we're disobedient. There's just times that, you know, we just don't feel like it or whatever it is. But then there's just times that there's different reason. And it could be God, because the Bible says that God can open doors that no man can shut but he can also close doors that no man can open. Yes. And that's the hard part is when those doors are closed that we may be saying, you know, the Lord rebuke you, devil. And we may be trying to cast out demons or we may be trying to, you know, and, you know, and fasting for weeks on end to try to figure out, I got to break this in the whole time. It's like, it's God. It's God saying, no, not yet. And you're just like, wait, God doesn't say no. I mean, this is, okay, to sin, I, okay, I get that. But this isn't sin. I'm trying to do something, you know. And this is what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at an example of this. So if we found ourselves in this place, or maybe we're there today, or it's somewhere we end up, because this will happen through a process of our lives, that we may find ourselves somewhere similar, we can have comfort tonight as we read this scripture and see that, well, God, maybe it's just you. This is you. This is just where I'm at today. And I have questions. I don't get it. But I can at least have peace knowing, Lord, it's it's you. So you're doing something here. So let's look at Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 9 through 13. This is the Lord's Prayer. If somebody would like to read that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. Oh. 
I'll read it. Okay, it says, pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It was this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Um, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For, go ahead, more? Yeah, the oh. one more, the one more. Or if you forgive others their trespass, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen. So thank you, Sister Alice, for that. And you know, how many of us heard us that prayer, right? The Lord's Prayer? Amen. Amen. Dude, we've all heard that prayer. We've probably grown up with it. We've probably relearned, recited. You know, something we just kind of became a tradition maybe over time, different things like that. But as we came to know the Lord, we realized it's not so much repeating that prayer, but so much it's it's the way he prays and the heart of the prayer that teaches the disciples and us today that read that how to pray. But there's a very key portion of that scripture of that prayer in there that is not always easy to to receive. Yeah. And that is your will be well forgive, but your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, we want God's will to be done when everything is, well, God, everything's for me today. You opened up that door of opportunity for me. You brought in the finances. You blessed me. You healed me. You delivered me. You know, all these different things. Lord, your will be done. What we don't like is when we say your will be done and the day just turns out to be a disaster. <laughs> You know, you got people rubbing you the wrong way. You got people cutting you off. You found yourself responding to people, probably not in the most holy way. You know, you got a headache. You might not feel good that day. And it's like, Lord, this was just a bad day. Like, I'm, this was a bad week. This was a bad month. This was a crazy year. And you're like, Lord, I was saying your will be done. Lord, are you sure? Like, you know, what happened here? Well, we start to learn in the Christian walk that his will be done doesn't, you know, doesn't always mean that, you know, the sun is always beautiful, shining. It is, but doesn't mean we're enjoying it, right? It's too hot today, Lord. Man, what the heck? It's burning up. You know, it went from being hot to all of a sudden being cold. What happened here, Lord? But nevertheless, the Lord teaches us to pray, your will be done. And that will your be to be done is basically his desire, his decree, his pleasure. Or it says, what one wishes or has determined shall be done. So it's not our will, but it's the Lord's will. And this is what the Lord teaches us, is that that should be our desire. Our desire should not be for our will, but for his will to be done. But with an understanding, we're not always going to understand his will. So we're going to look at an example here in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. If somebody can read that, and it's Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10. If we can turn there, and somebody can read that one there. It says, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hand. Amen. And good plan in many of your translations will see the will of God, the Lord's will or the Lord's will. Or I like that. the God's good plan, because it is a good plan. It's his will to be done. And right there in that scripture is talking about the suffering of Jesus. It says it was his good plan. It was his will to crush the son. But it was for our it was for the purpose to save humanity. It was for our salvation. It was for our healing. It was for our deliverance. It was for our joy, our peace with God the Father through that suffering that Jesus did. So we might look at that and be like, I mean, if we were Jesus, you know, we, you know thank God we weren't because, you know, we wouldn't have been able to measure up. But imagine Jesus had to suffer for our sins. He suffered for he, didn't, he was without sin, but yet he suffered for us. But yet it says that was God's perfect will. That was his perfect plan. But yet we wouldn't be able to understand it. And many times we have a hard time understanding. It. And that's the, that's the thing. If we're willing to say, Lord, let your will be done every day, every moment of our lives. 
That's one thing to say it, but another thing is, are we willing to accept his will? Are we willing to accept what his will may be? Now, I'm not saying we have to answer this tonight, but it is something that me and you have to understand that when we pray that, and that should be a part of our prayer, Lord, your will be done. But as we pray that, we also have to be willing to accept what his will may be, trusting him that, God, you're in control and you know all things. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it feels. You know, I don't like being in the dark, not understanding and feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm confused. Yes, that's Last right. week when that 35-year-old father died, uh, man, it took us through turmoil. Yeah. Our whole prayer group was praying for him, lifting him up, agreeing, declaring, decreeing, and he still died. And his two little kids don't have a dad anymore. And you just go, what the heck? Yeah. It didn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense, you know? And, but something good's going to come out of it. We know that. Amen. And that's accepting the Lord's will. I'm not saying that we're always in agreement with it, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's the reality. But again, like you said, but we know that God can work that out for the good. Yeah. And we don't understand it. We don't understand. We don't understand that that will for the kids. We don't get this stuff. And honestly, right. I'm not going to tell you I have all the answers because I don't. Right. But what I can say is God's will is good. And it's up to us to trust him enough to say, Lord, I'm willing to accept what your will is. And I'm not saying that it's always something to that extent. Sometimes it's, and many times it's great things. It's like, wow, Lord, I'm glad your will, I'm, I'm definitely in agreement with your will today. Definitely in agreement. And then other times I'm just like, I don't know about this. You know, is this your will? And it causes us to question, Lord, is this really you? And that's the thing. Sometimes you do have to question. You do have to question, Lord, what's going on? Is this a spiritual battle? Is this me or whatever it is? But again, it's coming to the Lord and seeking him. Lord, what is your will? I want to know your will because I know your will is good. And see, not everybody's always to, able to accept this will. Let's look at an example in Mark chapter 8. We're going to look at verse 31 to 33. If somebody would like to read that, Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 33. If somebody can read that one there. Okay. Um, my title is Jesus Predicts the Death and Resurrection. And he began to teach him that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he turned around and looked at his disciples, <clears throat> excuse me, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Wow. See? So right here we see that Peter, it's not a bad thing. I mean, and one of your friends, right? You know, your family member, a loved one, a friend, somebody tells you, oh, this is what's going to happen to me. You know what? They're going to betray me. They're going to kill me. You know, are you going to just take that lightly? No. You're going to step. No, I'm not going to let that happen. We're going to stand with you. We got your back. You know, no, that's not going to happen. Why? Because I love you, because you're my friend, because, you know, you're my family or whatever it may be. So what Peter is doing here is not necessarily wrong. He's just reacting because he loves the Lord. This is his friend. This is who he looks up to. So P by Peter saying this, you know, when Jesus rebuked him and told him this, he, he who knows, he how he felt, like, what? You just call me the devil? Like, you know, but he wasn't calling Peter the devil. What he was doing is he was rebuking that voice, that spirit that was taking advantage of Peter's emotions because Peter was concentrated on the will of man and not on the will of God. See, because God's will was to crush him. Jesus knew, I came to die this death. And by Peter coming against that and talking about stopping it, that's what he's rebuking. It's the will of man and what man thinks is right. And again, <clears throat> I would have did, the, I mean, I hope I would have did the same, right? We all hope we would have did the same, you know, because we would love the Lord. We're, man, we're able to be around Jesus, seeing him do all these miracles and teach us and take the time with us and all of that. That was amazing. 
not only that, to be part of that inner circle with him, you know, <clears throat> but yet he's telling them, you don't have the, you know, because he looks at the disciples to use Peter as an example. And how many of us love to be used as an example for correction? Oh, for correction. Yeah, for correction. That's, that sucks, right? Nobody likes that. It's like, why you got to pick on me? <laughs> you know, you could have chosen anybody else. Well, Peter, you're the one that spoke up. You got the big mouth, so you're going to be the one that's the example. But remember, he also told Peter, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of, gates of hell shall not prevail, right? Yeah, right? Amen. When he says, Peter, do you love me? You know I love you. Feed my sheep. See, even though Peter was used as an example to be cor as correction, but that was showing how much Jesus respected Peter, how much he loved him. So just because we may get called out or we've been called out in the past, sometimes it's done because you love them and you know that they can handle it. And we've had to do that with our kids. You know, sometimes you got to make an example, the older one or the younger one, you know, whichever one. And you use it as an example, not because you're picking or not, you know, any, because, you know, they can handle it. And because they're setting an example, even though it's correction, but it's still a good example for the younger sibling or the older sibling, whichever one it may be. You may have been that one that was always called out and the others learned from your mistakes, you know, and you can say, praise God. Well, at least my mistakes helped you as you get older. Maybe not at that time, but as you got older. Right. Yeah. I pray it did. Amen. So right here we see that this is what Jesus is doing. And he's using this to teach them your way of thinking is not God's way. And this is what he's showing them that the will of God has to be greater. So let's look at Mark 14, verse 36 to 38. Mark 14, verse 36 to 38. If somebody can read that one for me, please. What verses? Uh, 36 to 38. Abba Father, he cried out, everything is possible for him. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Amen. I believe there's one more, right? Verse 38. 37. Uh, 37 and 38. Yes. Uh, then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not get into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Amen. So we see even here, Jesus has to accept the will of God, the Father, for even his own life. He calls him Abba, Father. And he's asking him, if this cup can be taken from me, let it be done. But if, even if not, then not my will be done, but your will be done. He is laying down and submitting his will unto the Father, even though it's going to cost him his life. Oh, but he gains a resurrection. Amen. But then he gets on Peter and the disciples for sleeping and he tells them, see, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. How many of us know that our flesh is weak? But thank God we're not alone, right? Because we have a Holy Spirit who is what? Willing. Yeah. You think that was a literal hour? <clears throat> hmm? You think that was a literal hour? A literal hour? Yeah, literal. I think so. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. But it could have, you know, could have been the other sense, but I, I believe it was a little hour. So that's very possible through, through that night. So this is the blessing that me and you have today, because we know that the flesh is weak, but we know that the spirit is willing. So who should we be listening to? The flesh or the spirit? The spirit, right? Because the spirit will lead us into truth. The Holy Spirit is the one that will help me in you. But if we listen to the flesh, the flesh is contrary to God. The flesh will always go against what God's will is because the flesh is looking to satisfy the flesh. What is good for the flesh? What is good for me? What's going to make me feel better? What's going to comfort me? That's what the flesh is looking for. The spirit is looking to please God. Is looking to the will of the father. So if we want to know the will and to do the will of God or to accept the will of God, then we have to trust in the one who is willing. And that is the spirit of God. So I thank God for that scripture because that means that me and you don't have to do this alone. Because if it's dependent on me, I fail. 
And you notice I didn't say failed. I failed because I still failed today. How many of us fail in that? Amen. Thank you guys for being honest. Great. I'm not leaving me alone in that. Amen. I like that. Because I do. Because this flesh is weak. But the Holy Spirit is greater. And he is willing. And that's what continues to keep me in this relationship with God. It's his Holy Spirit, not me. Not because I'm good. I mean, you don't think that I try to run away just as much as you do? <laughs> the flesh is always trying to go contrary to God. But it's the spirit that holds us. It's the spirit that keeps us. It's the spirit that continues to encourage us. No, you keep going forward because we belong to God. And his Holy Spirit reminds us of that, that your life is no longer your own. Your own. It belongs to him. You belong to God. But what better has to be in them than in the Lord's? But again, this is a process. And another issue is, is it's not always easy to know the will of God. How many times have me and you ever asked the Lord, Lord, what's your will? How do I know your will, right? Have you guys ever asked that question? It's and hard. It is. It's hard. It's hard. And I'm looking, I'm reading this earlier today, and I look at Exodus 40. Let's go there real quick. I'll, I'll read this one. Exodus 40, chapter 40, last chapter here. And I saw this, and I was like, wow, you know what? I like that. Exodus chapter 40, verse 34 to 38. And it says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out to the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and the fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. I read that, and I was like, wow, Lord, that'd be awesome. See, then I would know your will. If the, cloud was, if the cloud was there, then I know, don't go. That's the Lord's will, stay. If the cloud left and departed, then I know, okay, now it's time to go. Then I can know the Lord's will. Lord, then I don't have to be asking you all the time. Because it's like, you know, it's cloud, okay, the cloud's still there, we can chill. The cloud lifts, okay, it's time to go. That's the Lord's will to do, right? But that's not how it is anymore. <laughs> we don't get that. But what really blesses me is, is that, see, they saw the outward presence of God. They saw it outwardly. They they saw this vision, and that's great. I mean, how many of us wouldn't love to see that, right? But even the Israelites said, please, we don't we don't no longer want to hear from God because he's too scary. It's, it's Have Moses talk to us, because the glory of God is just too much. Too much. If we would die in his presence. I mean, he's so holy. But that same very presence that the cloud that would hover over the tent of meeting, that same fire by night, that's the same presence that lives in me and you today and in every believer today. See, we may not be able to have that literal sense. We're like, okay, now we know it's time to go. Now we know it's not time to go. But we have the one within us that can do the same for me and you. Where we can ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? When do you want me to do it? But it's through our relationship with him. How do you get to know someone? Spend time with them? Over time? You know, how many of us know that true friendship is not overnight? True friendship is years. Because it's through the good times and the bad times and everything in between. Relationships, you know, between a boyfriend and a girlfriend, between a husband and a wife, that's years. You know, they call it the honeymoon. <laughs> but then after the honeymoon's over, now starts the reality. It's like, okay, this gets real now. You know, but again, that relationship builds over time because that's what's needed. And it's the same with the Lord, his Holy Spirit, his word. It's over time. We're not going to get all this and we're not even going to get it all in this lifetime. But thank God, because of him and in him, we have a whole eternity to know him. And because we know him, we'll get to spend all eternity with him in his presence. That's an awesome thing. But it takes time in getting to know him. Getting to know who he is. Knowing that, that greater one that lives in you. The Holy Spirit. 
See, in, in John chapter 16, verse 13, if somebody can read that one. John 16, 13. John 16, verse 13. Oh, 13. 13, yeah, 13. And when the 13. spirit of the truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Is that right? Amen, yes, amen. So he's the spirit of what? Truth. Truth, right? He is a spirit of truth, so he will only speak truth because God is truth. Jesus is truth. And so therefore, the Holy Spirit will only speak truth. But the problem is, as many times we don't want to hear or receive that truth because that truth is not something we agree with. That truth is not something we want to accept. It's like me and my wife were watching something the other day and, you know, we were enjoying the show or whatever, but. There was just, you know, just it just got a little out there, like really out there. And I'm just like, it bothered me. And I told her, you know what? I'm not going to accept that. I, I just, you know, I'm not going to accept that. I, I I can't, you know. And so I stopped, you know, I'm not, I was like, I'm not going to watch it no more or whatever it is. But there's things that we can choose to accept and there's things we could choose not to accept, you know. And that goes for everybody, in every individual. We all have a choice in this world, what you accept and what you don't accept. Many will choose to accept that the word of God is truth, and many will not. Many will choose to believe in other things that they see as truth and, and say what well, your truth is a lie. But we as believers today, this is our truth. This is the truth we believe in. And we know it to be true because God is true. And so, therefore, we can trust the spirit of God. We can trust him as he leads us and guides us and directs us. No one ever tells us to read the Bible or we shouldn't try to read the Bible based on our own educated minds and our own wisdom because, honestly, we're going we're gonna to miss it. There's going to be so many questions, so many gaps, so many different things like, well, what happened here? What happened there? And that's okay. But we're supposed to read it in a way, Holy Spirit, I need you to teach me through this. I'm reading this as, Lord, I'm having a conversation with you and I want to understand and know you more. No, I'm just trying. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. Amen. I was like, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's getting to know him and it's looking to his word in that to recognize him. Because there are many prophets, there are many prophecies, there are many things. And that's great. I believe in that. And, and I, like I shared on Sunday, you know, God, I want you to prophesy, speak. But we have to understand and be willing to know God to be able to discern what is of God and what is not. Right. Because in the Old Testament, there were many false prophets, and they were not prophets of God at all. And in the Bible says in the New Testament, there will be many false teachers. Because not only will they be prophesying, but they will be teaching falsely. Because that's dangerous. It's one thing to prophesy, but it's another thing to teach. It's difficult to just like go prophesy something and it could be true. Mm -hmm. It's still like, it's still like a foundation of a yeah, the motive. But people will believe it because they're like, oh, this is working. Like, you know, this is true. What does that satisfy? Just like the flesh. The flesh yeah. Because yeah. that's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to hear. And so, therefore, I'm going to listen to it, tickling my ears. You know, I remember many years ago, you know, they prophesied over me and Letty. And, uh, you know, it was a nice prophecy, but, you know, it was kind of like it didn't settle right because. You know, they told us, you know, oh, you didn't get a honeymoon and this and that. We were like, okay, that's, that's you know, that's truth. You know, we really did it. You know, I went to work the next day. You know, <laughs> we, you know, we got married and I was at work the next day. You know, but um, what's it called? But one of the things that had prophesied over us was, you know, we would go on a cruise. You know, and I'm just like, and everybody else was like, yeah, yeah. And, and he was like, and if you want it, then you receive it for yourself. And everybody's like, yeah. You know, the church was going crazy, you know. And we let them just kind of like. Okay, you know, I'm just like, all right. Then later on, Letty's like, I was like, God, because God knows I don't like cruises and I won't get in a boat. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't gonna do that, you know? Yes, it's a curve. So one time years ago, 
somebody from Good Shepherd um, was here, and they prophesied over her that she was going to get this fabulous car. Man, that set wrong with me. Some fear shit set wrong with me, I think. Why? What does it have to do with God that you're going to get? I don't know what kind of car she wanted. I don't remember. But it just really settled wrong. And then I have a question because only because we're right here. Okay. Do you believe that we should ask to see our angels? No. That's wrong, right? Yeah, I don't. I'm, no. Would that sit wrong with you? That would sit wrong with me. Yeah, definitely. Because okay. yeah, where's that in scripture? Huh? Where's that in scripture? Yeah. Yeah, that's. I'm. I mean, I know the angels are servants just as we are, as we've been learning through the Bible studies. You know, that's awesome to see is that we're servants just like the angels of God are servants, but we're not worshiping the angels. I quit yeah. ministry the minute they did that. I yeah, that, that's a little, you know, that's, but those are some teachings. Again, those are teachings those that are, are out there. Teachers. Yeah, definitely. Because that's nowhere in scripture and doesn't ever say we should be seeking out angels. We seek out God. Mm -hmm. But we believe that he has his angels and we believe that his angels obey to his, to his word and heed to his word and his command, you know, but they're servants just as we are servants. They're just heavenly being servants, but we're servants as well, you know, so I'm nowhere in that does that ever settle right with me. No, okay. definitely not. So, but yeah, there's, there's some stuff out there, but this is where we have to be willing to realize that, you know, it's like I've shared before and I'll share, I'll share it again. You know, many times people are looking for the prophet to come, but when you look at scripture in the even Old Testament and you even see in the New Testament, when do you see a bunch of people excited about the prophet? <laughs> Have you ever read the book of the prophets? Yeah, they hated them. They stoned them. They killed them. There's a prophet that comes to Paul and ties him up and says, this was going to happen to you <laughs> for the sake of the gospel. You know, because the prophets brought truth. It was done in love and they spoke the love of God, but they brought truth. And I remember when prophet Alice came here and he would bring, I didn't want to see prophet Alice here. Because I know he was going to tell me some stuff I didn't want to hear. And he would rub me the wrong way, but it wasn't him. I knew it was God. I remember one time he says, you're like a little kid playing with the straw. You have this gift and this and that, but you keep playing with the straw. What does that mean? It just means I wasn't taking the gift seriously. I was just kind of, you know, there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I'll share that with you. But he hit it right on the head. He, he, he was true. It was right. You know, and I was a little upset about it. And like, whatever, you want to be prophet? You know, but... <laughs> Later on, when I, later on, yeah, because that was my flesh. My flesh didn't like that. And then plus it was kind of loud, so the church heard it. Like, you know, if you knew Prophet Alex, he was not quiet. <laughs> he was loud. You know, so it was like, man, everybody's hearing this, man, you know. But later on, I realized, you know, I told him, I talked to him, and I apologized. And I said, you know, I was upset at you, man. But, you know, <laughs> I came to realize he was speaking truth. Because what that did is it caused me to go seek God and to find out for myself. And, yeah, it was the Lord speaking to me. Because it was some things that God, and it wasn't that he was trying to tear me down. It was God working some things to give me some insight. So therefore I can be aware of it and allow him to do the work. And that's what a prophet will do. He'll bring you truth because it's not the prophet. It's the spirit of truth that's working in the gift of that individual. And that's where we need to know. And this is where it's important here that we're looking at this scripture here, that we're seeing some truth being spoken by the spirit of God. We have to be able to recognize when God says no. We have to be able to recognize that, God, you're not allowing me to minister to this person. God, you know, I, I want to help this person, but yet, God, it, it seems like every time I try to do something for this person or I try to do this, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. I've been wanting to do this, but it just doesn't work out. I've been wanting to talk to this person, but I just the opportunity never arises. And the Lord says, and, and you're not even hearing the Lord, but it just never seems to work. And so what happens is, is we start to put this guilt trip on ourselves because we think, man, I'm not witnessing. I'm not praying for this person. I'm not doing this for this person. And all of a sudden, a guilt trip starts to come in and shame starts to hit us because now we feel like we're not doing what we're supposed to do. And sometimes maybe we're not. <laughs> but other times, God has a different purpose and a plan. He has a different reason. So we're going to go to Acts 16 now. We're going to look at what's going on here. And we're going to break this down. So therefore, we have some clarity and a little bit of insight to what God is doing. So we can recognize this in our own lives. So we're going to look at verse 6 of this scripture in Acts chapter 16. It says, And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. 
Okay. So that word forbidden or forbidden by that we have here is our title. You guys, oh, gosh, that's time. <laughs> so it's forbidden by, right? And what does that mean? Forbidden by. If I, if, if uh, you know, Frank forbids me to do something, what is he basically telling me? Not to. Not to. Or stopping me from it. You know, not letting me. It's messed up, Frank. Come on, man. You know, <laughs> if I want to get another bread, brother, I could get one now. <laughs> So it's forbidden, and this is saying right here that they were forbidden by who? By the Holy Spirit. Wait, that doesn't... So you're telling me that Paul's trying to do something, all of a sudden, Holy Spirit says, no, stop it. And forbids him, is like, well, wait a minute, what? It wasn't like Paul was trying to go sin. It wasn't like Paul was looking to go to these towns and hit the clubs. <laughs> he wanted to go preach the word. He was a missionary. He was an apostle. He wanted to go establish churches and this trip from where he was going to Troas was a 400-mile journey. That was a long distance to travel. And so Paul in this area is now thinking, okay, I'm going to travel here. In his mind, in his thoughts, he's thinking, I'm going to stop along the way. Got 400 miles to go. So obviously God wants me to take advantage of this. I'm an apostle. <laughs> I'm a missionary. God's doing miracles and all this. So obviously what God wants me to do is he wants me to preach the gospel on my way to Troas. And I got 400 miles to do it. I mean, why wouldn't Paul think that? That was what he was out there doing everywhere else. We, it, is, it is unclear what happened here. It's unclear if the Holy Spirit spoke to him audibly, if a prophet came and spoke to him, or if this was done through prayer. Or just within his heart, he just knew not to stop there. The Bible's unclear that all it tells us is, is that it was forbidden by the Holy Spirit for him to stop off in these places and preach the word of God. See, that's one of those things that are like, wait a minute. And that's what I'm talking about. This could have been very confusing for Paul because Paul's wait, I'm an apostle. This is what I do. I've been beaten, I've been scourged, I've been left for dead, I've been betrayed, all these different things. And yet, I'm going to go all this journey and not be able to preach in these towns? They need me. I'm popular, you know? They're all waiting for me. I'm not, I'm just, you know, just exaggerating a little bit. I'm not sure Paul was like that. But, you know, I mean, in his mind, he's thinking like, man, so this could have been very confusing for Paul. Like I said, Paul wasn't looking to go sin. He wasn't looking like, man, who can I hook up with or what clubs can I go hit? No, no. He was looking to go and say, look, I'm going to go preach the word of God. Now he's forbidden by the Holy Spirit to do so. Paul's on a 400 mile journey thinking, and this could have been a confusing time for him. God, am I done? Yeah. Am I done? Is it time for me to move on? Is it time for me, you know, is, you know, if I see you're, you know, I'm raising up others, got Timothy coming up, I got, you know, Barnabas, you know, I got Silas, you know, all these, so is, you know, is it my time to like call it or whatever? Who knows? But just like, and, and I, and this thought comes to mind because I think about myself or any one of us, we're doing, you know, we're, we're doing what we believe God has called us to do. We're living this life, believing and trusting in him. And there's things we want to do, but it just doesn't seem to work out. And that can put us in a very tough place because now we're wondering, well, Lord, what am I doing? Is this right? Am I, am I in the right place? Am I in your will? You know, where's the cloud at, Lord? Where's the fire? <laughs> and this could be a hard place to be in. But that comes to a place of trust. That comes to a place of trust when you have someone in your life and you're like, I should be ministering to this person. I want to see them saved. But yet I never do. The opportunity never rises. Yeah, I pray for them. But it's never like I'm over there preaching to them. And many times those will be those that are closest to you. You'll find yourself speaking to others. But to those that know you and that are close to you, you might not. Maybe some. Maybe not everybody. But could it be that God is telling you no? Could it be that God's got a different plan and purpose for that person? Could it be that God is maybe not going to use you or me? 
that's not easy. Because the first ones that we think about are those next to us. I remember when we joined uh, Primerica, you know, the life insurance thing. First thing they tell you, go get your family. <laughs> go get those closest to you. Why? Because they're the ones that will accept you and most likely buy life insurance and you can recruit them. And you oh, build your business. Selling. Yeah, selling, yeah. Yeah, oh, you selling. Selling. yeah, yeah. I thought you were buying insurance. No, no, that was to teach. You know, but there was all these different things. But even as a Christian, that's one of the things we want to do is we want to be able to let others know. Because we don't want we want to be saved and we want those we love to be saved. Absolutely. We want them to know the Lord. But many times they're not willing to receive it from us. It says that Jesus was not accepted in his hometown. And he didn't do many miracles there because of the unbelief. Because it said, Isn't that Mary and Joseph's son? I saw him since he was a little kid, man. What do you mean? You know? Yeah. They, it was hard for them to accept him. And many times those closest to us, it's hard for them to accept the change that has gone on in you. But yet somebody else outside would be like, man, there's something different about you, Sister Alice. There's something different about you, Catherine. But yet those around you, there's something different about you. <laughs> but because they know us, right? I mean, it's just, it's just but again, does the Lord have a different purpose? See, I believe also Deuteronomy 19.15, it talks about where two or three, two or three, make a decision based upon the witnesses of two or three witnesses. So this could have been something that was taken out of prayer. They could have been praying and, you know, what? through the prayer, the Lord showed Paul or showed someone there, hey, you know what? The Lord doesn't want us to go here. And because of that, it says that they, I mean, they obviously accepted the direction of the Holy Spirit as hard as it may have been, realizing there's a need for the gospel in these cities as we're going down. Put in a place that they would have to accept the will of God in this time because that's what the Holy Spirit was saying. Yes, it's true. I read this today. It was uh, Genesis 15, 12 through 16. And basically what it was saying, that God told Abraham, it's going to be 400 years before you're going to possess this land and all. And the part of it that but God's time in, this has been in the fourth generation, and we'll return here for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. So that was God's timing. And this is not now. Amen. It may come, not now. Did you know that the Lord can tell you not to pray for someone? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, amen, amen. Reading some Bible then. That's some deep stuff in the Bible right there. That's not a lot of stuff that people get to in the Bible. Uh, it's Old Testament, Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 16. Oh, uh, what is that? Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 16. You, um, you can. No, I mean, why did you say that? Well, because that's where it's at. So Jeremiah, chapter oh. 7, verse 16, and chapter 11, verse 14. You'll be able to find that there. That is a portion of scripture that, let's go, let's go to one of them. Let's go to Jeremiah 7, 16. Hold your place here in Acts. Well, let's go look at that because... I don't want you to take my word for this. <laughs> well, look what it says in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16. I remember one of the first times I heard this and read it, I was like, is this right? Like, you know, like, what? But Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16. It says, as for you... Do not pray for this people or lift up a cry or prayer for them and do not intercede with me for I will not hear you. Anybody got a reason? Anybody want to, you know, give a, a thought of why God said that here? He has another plan. He has another plan. <laughs> God kept giving them chances word to the prophets and they don't want to listen so he was like okay i'm letting go for for judgment yeah. yes the prophets would warn the people that there was coming a judgment because they rejected him and he gave them warning for so many hundreds of years they're giving them warning but they would always turn back to their idols and the prophets and that's why the prophets were killed because they would speak the truth and the people did not like that 
So what God is telling him here is that he's not telling because he doesn't, he loves the people. That's why he was bringing this about. That's why Jesus died because he loves humanity. This judgment had to come upon the people of Israel because he loved them that much. And so for Jeremiah to pray against that would have caused Jeremiah to pray against God's will. That's what it was. That's why it was due that, the prophets of Jeremiah. And see, and, and again, God's judgment was never because he hated Israel. He loved Israel. But he had to bring them to judgment because it was the only way that he can bring them back, that they would come back to him. And they would realize how much he loved them because it was so far off. And how many of us were in our lowest state that we had to be allowed to go to our lowest state in order to turn to him? Because without it, I probably wouldn't have turned back to the Lord. An example comes to mind where I think that that happened with uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. People were praying for them, but it was God's will. Yeah. And this judgment is the only way that it brought the people to repentance. And see, here's the thing. There will be times and people in our lives that it's not that the Lord will tell you, don't pray for them. But are we willing to accept the will of God for those that we love around us for the sake that God can bring them to repentance yep. so that they can come to know him? What does Ichabod mean? Does it have to do with Ichabod too? Ichabod means the glory has departed. Oh, glory has departed. The glory has departed, yeah. That's when uh, the glory left the temple, and because of that, when the woman went into labor. And With Valerie's first husband, mm -hmm. she was prophesied not to marry her husband, and she, and she said, Ichabod, I remember that so clearly. Ichabod. So do we. Huh? Do we remember that. Yeah, we remember that. <laughs> but see, right here, we must understand sometimes that God, if I hadn't gone into the dark places I had to go into, I would have never turn to the Lord. And I'm sure like my mom praying for me, others praying for me, you know, you know, that's not how we pray, right? It's not, you know, put him in the darkest place. But I have found myself praying for people in my life and people that, you know, that I've come across and I've had to pray, Lord, let your will be done. And Lord, whatever you need to, whatever you are doing or need to do, Lord, Lord, have mercy on them. But Lord, let them come to know you. If somebody asks, can God do anything, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody says, of course, of course, of course, of course. And then she, she believed or turned it to where it says, it can't be done because of their unbelief. But it, it, could have, it, it stopped. Regardless of the fact that everyone has to come to the choice to believe. Mm -hmm. We all have to make that decision. Every single person is responsible for where they come. Because even in those hard times and places doesn't mean that people will still turn to God. You know, they can turn farther away. But this is where we pray. We intercede on behalf of those that they will turn to him, that they will believe in him, and that they will put their faith in him. And, you know, sometimes it's going to require me and you moving out of the way and letting God be God. And the Lord may say, okay, stop helping them. Because all you're doing is be causing them to become codependent upon you and not me. How will they ever know I'm God? Good point. Unless you're willing to give them to me. Good point. That's hard. Mm -hmm. That is a hard place. But I've seen God bring people to the Lord through that. It is possible. It is possible. But it's again, it's accepting God's will, trusting God. And whether we see it or not, but knowing and believing, but God, I know it'll be their decision to make that choice to believe in you. But I know that you are faithful and that you are patient and that you give everyone an opportunity to know you. And that's not easy, but it's necessary. Yeah, just like accepting God's will in certain situations. Yeah. Accepting God's will in certain situations. I mean, that's, you know, it's not easy, but again, it's accepting it, but it's accepting it knowing that we can trust him. Yeah. You know, I keep going back to that the message a couple weeks ago, we can trust him. Out of, out of everybody in this world, this life, we can trust God. 
we can and through everything you can trust him we might not be able to trust ourselves <laughs> but we can trust god because sometimes i can't trust this right here this up here not my hair my this mind <laughs> it was like the old song my mind's playing tricks on me yeah that's it happens but i know i can trust god i know who i can turn to i know where i can turn to but again it's having to know and trusting and learning lord this is you. We're going to have to trust you through this. So let's go back to uh, verse 7 and 8 of 16. We're going to close up with these last verses here. And it says in verse 7, And when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. So right here again, they were not permitted. They were not allowed. They were restrained from going to these places. And it says here, that they ended up at Troas after that. But they attempted to. They tried. They, I mean, they were passing Bithynia and all these, and they still tried to go. But it said that the Spirit did not permit them and did not let them go. But we're going to see why here in this verse 9 and 10. It says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, Immediately, we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach, preach the gospel to them. See, God had different plans. He had different purpose. See, Paul was still to preach, but see, Paul, God wanted Paul to go preach in Macedonia. And so through that journey of 400 miles to Troas, he was not able to go and preach in these other places, but because God had a different purpose and he needed him to get to Troas. So therefore he can be willing to go to Macedonia next because that's where God wanted him. It wasn't about where Paul thought he should be or what he should do or what looks like should be done. It was a matter, even Paul who wrote most of the new Testament, who many like idolized Paul, are like, man, Paul was a great, even Paul through all of that, still he had to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. He could, just because he got to a certain level in ministry didn't mean he could start making decisions on his own. He was required even more now to depend upon the Holy Spirit and go only where the Holy Spirit would send him. And go only where he was, because he was still, he was still answerable to God. He was a servant. Paul was no greater than me and you. He was just a man that believed in the Lord, trusted him, and did what God called him to do. Did he do it perfectly? He was a man. Sure, he failed, and he talks about that. But he continued the race until the race was completed, until the Lord took him home. And that's what we're required to do. But he tells him in John 10, 16, he says, I have other sheep that you know nothing about, but they hear my voice and they know me. John 10, 16. See, God had a different plan. So if you find yourself in a place and you're just like, again, I don't know what's going on. This and that, God's got a different plan. We have to trust that plan. Or some will say, trust the process. We got to trust God through it. He'll get us to the place where he wants us. He'll get us to, to what he wants us to do, where he wants us to be. But we got to trust him through it, that Lord Though I want to do this and I want to do that, but God, what is it you want me to do? And are we willing to accept the will of God for our lives to do so? But what about the other towns? And I'm going to close with this because this one definitely encouraged me and you. What about the other towns? What about the other people? What about all the people that Paul passed? Well, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. If somebody would like to read that. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispensation in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect That's... according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So they went to... Did you recognize those names? Yes. Yeah. So even though Paul didn't go and preach there, someone did. The gospel reached them. 
And what that did is let Paul know, Paul, you are not the only one. He is not the only preacher. He is not the only servant. God was able to still reach those other towns, even though Paul didn't go. Because it wasn't about Paul. It was about the Lord. It was about Paul following God's will for his life. But it was always about God. And eventually those people did get the gospel. Because Peter mentions them here. Was it Peter that went there? Who was it? I don't know. But we do know that he's calling them pilgrims. Those that are part of the body of Christ in those cities that Paul passed up. So no matter what, God is faithful. And he will always take care of his people. So those around us that maybe the Lord is not using us to minister to, God will reach them. But it's our responsibility to continue to do and be willing to accept God's will for our lives through everything and trust God. Lord, I know you take care of them. If you allow me to lead them to the Lord, praise God. But if not me, then I know you'll bring somebody else. But they will know you. And I will continue to believe, God, you're able to reach them where they're at. I put here to keep working, to be about your father's business, and he will call those around you. But I like verse 10 also, because it's the when, when he says we, it's referring that Luke now is joining him in the ministry. The one that's writing Acts is now joining him in the ministry. So not only is he writing about it, but now he becomes an eyewitness to all the events that start to take place afterwards. And it reminds me of the scripture that we have for the year, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you as well. See, the Lord knows how to add unto us. He added unto Paul, to the ministry, to his life. And as we seek the Lord and his righteousness, his authority, his kingdom, his will, God will add to me and you as well. He takes care of that. But are we willing to trust and accept his perfect will for our lives and for the lives around us? How many of us know we can't change people? <laughs> How many have tried? Okay. <laughs> Not very many successes, successes, right? Or at least lasting successes. We can help people, encourage people. But the reality is we don't even have the power to change ourselves. Well, maybe some of you do, but I don't. <laughs> We need God, and so do those around us. And we can trust God that he is able to reach those around us. So I, I know that we're encouraged tonight because the word of God does so, that we can trust him and know that, Lord, I might not always understand it, but I can trust you. And it may seem like a no now, but it doesn't mean it's a no. It just means that God's still working. Pastor, what did you say about the we? Did you say that one more time? The which one? When you talked about the we. What were you saying? That was from verse 10. Yeah, I see that. But what did you say about it? That was when Luke joined the minute when Luke joined Paul. So he's part of the we. He joined them before this, though, obviously. Well, he was writing the accounts, but right there now he started to become an eyewitness to all the work that the Holy Spirit was doing through, the, through Paul oh, and the apostles there. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, Brother AJ. Expanded title, forbidden by God. Forbidden by the Holy Spirit, forbidden by God, yes. Oh, yeah. And see, many times we think forbidden by God, we're thinking of the apple, right? <laughs> or the fruit, right? But this time it was just what was meant that, you know, it seemed like it was good. And it wasn't, it wasn't bad what Paul wanted to do, but that's not what God wanted him to do. And so that's one of the things we have to understand and know, well, God, there are things I want to do, things I want to help or something. But if that's not for me, then Lord, I'll trust you. But right where I'm at, I'm going to believe that what I'm doing now, what is what I'm supposed to be doing. And though, yeah, there's a lot of work still being done in me, but God, I thank you that you're faithful to complete that work, right? I thank God you are patient. <laughs> so keep keep that work up, Lord. Amen? Amen. Any questions, comments, you know, anything that you guys have to, you know, as well to, to uh, add tonight to tonight's teaching? Was it something new for you, something that you knew already or just something uh, different? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that, that happens quite a bit to all of us, right? 
so yeah, like you said, it just kind of expands that visual there to see, okay, there's a lot more, there's a lot more to go and, uh, you know, you have more for me. So praise God. That's right. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. There's a lot to learn. I'm thinking about Paul and Kyle Plant. The 400 miles sticks out to me. It's a long journey because when you're on the highway, you see 400 miles, you're like, it's going to take forever. So Paul, preparing for his journey, 400 miles, but someone was already doing the work there. And we trust God that there's people 400 miles away. So the question is, why do I have to go that far if I know God can use somebody 400 miles away, but it's still that not knowing but trusting because you got to do what the Spirit That's does. true. Yeah, that was a long trip to take. That's there, right. I'm pretty sure there's people there that could have ministered also, but it's trusting God. That's right. Amen. Yeah, it just like messed with my mind a little. Like, But there's people there already, you know? Yeah. No, <laughs> you have to trust God. You're right. You're right. But sometimes God will use you in a different place, right? You know, you may go on vacation somewhere and all of a sudden you're thinking, all right, I'm on vacation. The Lord said, hey, you're on vacation, but you're on vacation from me. <laughs> and he may use you right there on your vacation, you know, wherever you're at. You know, he use you to pray for somebody, to pray for the people there, or encourage somebody, you know, and you just never know, you know. But it's just knowing that every time we say, Lord, let your will be done, that we're willing to accept what his will is. And if it's a no, then it's a no. If it's a yes, then praise God for that, right? And we do it by his, his grace and his mercy. And some days we'll get it and some days we won't, right? But you know what? It's Thank God it's a day-by-day -day process, right? Amen. And we can continue to trust him daily. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else as we close up tonight? I was thinking about when, uh, was it Paul that was going to be shipwrecked? And the angel said, don't, don't go. Mm -hmm. Don't jump off it's the ship. crash, but everybody's going to live. So that was a no also. Yeah, that was definitely a no. Yeah, it will be. We'll be reading that soon enough. But yeah, you know, if we, you know, if somebody tells you your boat's gonna crash. You really gonna want to stay on that? Yeah. <laughs> but amen. But we'll we'll be getting to that soon though. We'll see that soon in the scripture. Now I don't remember. Did they get another boat? Uh they ended up in another boat later on. Yeah, but they did crash though. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they crashed. Do, they do crash. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, sometimes you do need a crash though. <laughs> We'll, we'll get into that soon enough, though, right? We'll get into that soon enough. Well, praise the Lord. Well, thank you guys for tonight, and thank you guys for your input and your questions and, you know, and reading, you know, being a part and, and uh, really just really blessed to be a part, you know. And, and just like I said, these last two Bible studies were just kind of those ones you kind of like upside down, like, wait, what? Like, what? Like, this is like kind of, but it's, it's, it's real. That's, you know, but again, that's our God, you know. And I'm just grateful, Lord, that he can be real with us, right? So we can be real with him. I'm grateful for that. Uh, any prayer requests tonight? Any prayer requests as we close up tonight? Prayer requests. Mm -hmm. For those that are watching online as well, feel free to put them up there. Um, salvation for our children. And I have an interview Tuesday um, with uh, Alhambra Unified School District. Okay. Praise God. Um, okay. So put that in prayer. Yes, definitely. Amen. Amen. Catherine, you had a prayer request? Um, yeah, it was for my friend, um, Mooney. She was just struggling a lot with um, anxiety and depression and with school, just like hoping she finds, you know, um, salvation and, you know, hoping the Holy Spirit you know, comes to her. <laughs> Amen. All right. Definitely. Amen. Yes, Brother AJ. Yeah, just continue prayer for uh, Bobby Quiz and uh, Pastor Vicki. He's been having some health problems too. Okay. Definitely. So, we'll definitely have to let him pray. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Yes, it's Karen. Last week we prayed for Evan, who's a COVID long hauler. He started showing um, improvement the exact next day. He's still on dialysis, still on a respirator, still on the ECMO, but still his oxygen is getting better, and he's improving daily. And his Amen. mom is a believing woman. Praise so God. I don't know Evan, by the way. I don't okay. know him, but... God knows. God knows him. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yes, it's relevant. Oh, I was going to say a uh, prayer for my sister. Uh, she has, uh, might have to have surgery. No, she's going to have surgery on her knee, but I don't know which knee, but God knows. Okay. Definitely. Her name's Patricia. Patricia. Okay. 
Definitely. All right, well, let's come together in prayer tonight. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this wonderful night, Lord, and we thank you for your word today, Lord God. We thank you for teaching us by your spirit, Lord, and we just thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, Father, for what you revealed to our hearts tonight, and Father, but we also thank you for the word that was planted on good ground, my God, and that, Father God, you will continue, Lord Jesus, to even give us more insight, Lord God, and continue, Lord Jesus, to open up the scriptures to help our minds to understand, Father God, and Lord, we know that this comes about through our daily living, through our daily lives, Father God, and just at a time of knowing you, Lord Jesus. So we're just so grateful to you tonight, Father God, because, Lord, you are so good, Lord. And we just thank you, Father God, Lord, that we're able to come together to just seek you, Lord Jesus, and to learn to trust you, my God. And, Father, to be encouraged together today, my God, because that's what your word does. It encourages us and gives us light, Father God. And the Holy Spirit within us witnesses to your word, my God. So, Lord, we just thank you tonight, Heavenly Father, because, Lord, there are many times, Lord, that you have said no, Lord God, or many times we just didn't know if it was a no or a yes. And, Lord, we just were kind of in a place, just kind of felt stuck, Lord. But, Lord, we thank you, Father God, that, Lord, through it all, Lord, you help us to continue to trust you, Lord. And in that, Father God, Lord, we have seen your glory. We have seen the outcome. We have seen, Lord Jesus, that, Father, it was you that was doing the work, Lord. It was you that closed the door, my God, that, Lord, we've been trying to kick open, but, Lord, it was you that closed it, Lord. But, Lord, in its time, Lord, it was you that opened it, Father God. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us even more, Lord, to continue to trust you, but also help us, Father God, Lord, to grow in this relationship with you, Lord, as we are making a decision to invest our time in this relationship, Lord, to know you more, Lord God, so we can recognize you, Father, because, Lord, you don't always speak to the prophet. You don't always just speak through believers, but Lord, many times you could just speak through a friend, through someone who maybe not is not a believer, Lord, but Lord, you speak through them, Lord. And when we are attentive to you, Lord Jesus, we're able to hear you speak. So Father God, Lord, we just thank you because Lord, you're able to speak through anyone, Lord. You can speak through situations. You could speak, Father, through a TV show we're watching, my God. And Lord, all of a sudden you witness to our hearts, Lord. But Lord, are we willing to hear you, Lord? Are we willing to listen? Are we willing Lord Jesus, to seek you, Lord, more, to know, Father God, you, and to recognize when you're speaking to us, Lord. Father, we just thank you this night, Father God, and we ask you to help us to grow in this area, Lord, to help us to be attentive to you, that we can be discerning and recognize when it's you, Lord God. And Father God, Lord, if we're in a place today, Lord God, where we just are in that place, we have so many questions, Lord. We're serving you, we're doing this, but Lord, it just seems like you know, Lord, it's just, it's hard. We just don't know where we're at today. But Lord, if that is us today, then Father, we just thank you for reminding us, Lord Jesus, that Lord, you're still in control and you, there's a reason and a purpose for it, Lord. And you're going to bring us to that place, Father, that we can get some clarity and realize that, Lord, this was part of it, Lord. And Father, we thank you that we're not alone, Lord Jesus, that Father, you have many of our brothers and sisters all across the world, Lord God, that are able to reach, Father God, those in other countries, other places, but not only that, we have brothers and sisters around us today, Lord, that are able to reach our immediate families, Lord. We're able to reach spouses, are able to reach our children, our grandchildren, Lord, are able to reach our co-workers, Lord. And Father God, we just thank you today, Lord God, because Lord, it may not be us that leads them to you, Lord, but Lord Jesus, others will, Lord. But it's because of being able to know them and pray for them, Lord God, that we also able to take part in that because Lord Jesus, we know that you're able to reach them, Lord. So tonight, Father, we just ask that your will be done. And help us to grow in accepting your will and trusting you through your will, Lord, because we know that your will is perfectly good, Lord. And Father, we just thank you that in your will, Lord, all things are possible, Lord God. So, Father, we can stand and believe and continue to pray, Father God, because we know, Lord Jesus, that you hear our prayers, Lord, and you answer us according to your will and according to your purpose, Father God. So, Lord Jesus, we're going to continue to stand in the gap. We're going to continue to intercede on behalf of those today, my God, that, Lord Jesus, are, are praying for, for salvation, that are praying for healing, for deliverance, my God, for wisdom, for guidance, Lord God, for provision, my God, for finances, Lord, for healing. Father God, Lord Jesus, Lord, for, Father, deliverance from bondage, Lord Jesus, for those that are in hard places today, my God. But, Lord, we know that you are able, Lord Jesus, to do the impossible, Lord. So we continue standing and believing, Lord, especially for those that you are comforting, Lord, that are mourning and in grief today, my God. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, we come together tonight, Lord, and we lift up our Sister Alice's prayer request for the salvation of her children. My God, we just thank you tonight, Lord God, that, Lord, as we read tonight, you are able, Lord Jesus. 
You are able, Lord Jesus, to let them know who you are, that they may come to you, Lord God. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you tonight, Father God, because, Lord, we all have those around us today that we are believing for the salvation. So we know, Father God, the importance of this prayer, Lord, and we stand together, yes. Lord Jesus, with our sister yes. tonight, Lord, in this prayer, Lord. Father, we thank you for the interview that she has scheduled, Lord God. And, Father, we are standing together today, Lord, believing for that favor that you will open up that door, my God. And, Father God, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, Father God, Lord, that, Lord, you know the desire of her heart, Lord God. And, Lord Jesus, we're believing that this is your will, my God. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you, Lord, that, Father God, this would be a successful interview, Lord. And, Father, we're going to trust you through it, Lord. Lord, the surgery that's being prepared, you know the knee, you know the issue, Lord, and we just thank you, Father, that you're in control and that, Father, it will be successful, Lord God, and that you will bring restoration to the body, my God. We thank you, Father God, for Catherine's request, Father Lord, for this person to know you, Lord Jesus. That is her desire, and we're standing with her today that she will know you, Lord. And, Father, that you will bring others around her, my God, that Lord Jesus will also be able to encourage her, my God. And, Father God, Lord, that she would be drawn to you, Lord. And that, Father, she would know the peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for this person with COVID, my God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for Evan, Lord Jesus, as you are bringing him through, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that, Lord Jesus, that, my God, though there is much else going on, my God, but, Lord, it's not greater than you, Lord Jesus. And that all those things are subject to you, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for the power and authority that you have over Evan's life today, my God. The power and authority that you have over Pastor Mickey and Bobby Waters, Lord Jesus. And, Father God, our brothers and sisters in Christ today, my God. And we are just standing and believing today, my God, because, Lord, we know to whom we belong to today, Lord. So, Father, we just lift up all these prayer requests and petitions yes. to you today, Father, yes. and we ask that your will be done, Lord. And we just thank you tonight, Father, that we can rejoice in your will, Lord, because, Lord Jesus, nothing is too hard for you, Lord. So we just thank you this night, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we are dismissed tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you, Jesus. Barnabas and Mark. Oh, and then Paul and Timothy and Silas. So how did we get Luke here? I'm just confused. How did we get Luke here? Yeah, like how did he get right here? Well, God bless you guys. Thank you guys for joining the silent as well. We will see you soon. Amen. Um, well, he was the one that was studying into.